The book of Helaman begins with the people of Nephi facing a serious difficulty after the death of their chief judge, Pahoran. There was a great contention concerning who would have the judgment seat among the sons of Pahoran. The voice of the people chose Pahoran the younger, but his brother, Paonkai, flattered away his followers to rise up in rebellion. But he was caught in his treason and sentenced to death. His followers sent an assassin, Kishkuman, who killed Pahoran as he sat upon his judgment seat. The last brother, Pekumani, was made chief judge by the voice of the people, but in the first year of his reign, Amaron's son, Tubaloth, now king of the Lamanites, gathered an innumerable army. They were heavily armored and led by a large and mighty man, a dissenter from the Nephites named Coriantumr. He marched forth with his numerous host and came straight through to the heart of the Nephite lands. So great was the speed of his march, and because of so much contention in the Nephite government, the Nephites had no time to gather together their armies. Coriantumr cut down the watch of the city of Zarahemla and slew everyone who did oppose him. Pekumani fled before Coriantumr, but was slain by him at the walls of the city. After capturing Zarahemla, Coriantumr took courage. He cut his way through the most capital parts of the land, slaying men, women, and children, marching towards Bountiful and the lands beyond to the north. When Moronihah became aware of what was happening, he sent Captain Lehi to head off the Lamanites before they reached Bountiful. This he did, and became an immovable object to Coriantumr and his host. The Lamanites tried to retreat back toward Zarahemla, but Moronihah and his men blocked their escape. In the battle that followed, Coriantumr lost his life, and the Lamanites were trapped, having been plunged into the midst of the Nephite lands. The Lamanites surrendered, and they were permitted to depart out of the land in peace. Helaman was appointed to fill the vacancy in the government, but there could be no safety while Kishkuman loomed in the shadows. A servant of Helaman secretly discovered the plans of Kishkuman's evil band, now led by Gadianton. This servant tricked Kishkuman and killed him while he was on his way to slay Helaman. When Kishkuman did not come back, Gadianton and his followers escaped into the wilderness by a secret way. For the next decade, during Helaman's reign, there was great prosperity in the land and in the church. Some contentions led an exceedingly great many to depart out of the land of Zarahemla and find a new home in the land northward. When Helaman died, his eldest son, Nephi began to reign in his stead. Unfortunately, in the first year of his reign, there were many dissensions in the church and much contention among the people, which led to much bloodshed. The rebellious part were driven out of the land and went straight to the king of the Lamanites. Eventually, they were able to stir them up to come down upon the Nephites to battle. The Lamanite army did commence the work of death upon the Nephites, and because of the wickedness of those that professed to belong to the Church of God, in one year's time, the Lamanites had successfully conquered nearly all the Nephite lands in the land southward. Moronihah preached many things unto the Nephites, as did Nephi and Lehi, the sons of Helaman, and with their repentance were able to regain about half their lands, but no more. Nephi delivered up the judgment seat to Sezorim and dedicated himself to full-time preaching of the word of God with his brother Lehi. They first preached among the Nephites, then plunged into enemy-controlled territory into the land of Zarahemla. Armed only with the word of God, they converted 8,000 Lamanites, and also many dissenters who confessed their sins, were baptized and returned to the Nephites to attempt to repair the wrongs which they had done. Nephi and Lehi did not stop, but proceeded to the heart of the Lamanite lands in the land of Nephi. In a panicked response, the Lamanites sent an entire army to apprehend the two men before they could do any more damage with the power of their message and cast them into prison. After denying them food for many days, the Lamanites went forth to slay their brothers, but they were encircled about as if with fire. The earth quaked at the words of Nephi and Lehi and a thick cloud of blackness surrounded the Lamanites. A quiet, 
piercing voice spoke out of the blackness, telling them to repent and seek no more to destroy God's servants. One of the Lamanites, Aminadab, was a Nephite by birth and a dissenter from the Church of God, helped the others to call on the name of Christ and repent. As this happened, a pillar of fire encircled each and every one of them, and they were visited by angels. The powerful testimony of these Lamanites led to the conversion of the more part of all the Lamanites. They did lay down their weapons and gave back the lands to the Nephites. Soon the righteousness of the Lamanites did exceed that of the Nephites and led to many of them traveling to Zarahemla. They shared the story of their conversions and exhorted the Nephites to faith and repentance. Both peoples prospered in this era of peace and plenty but it only lasted a few years before tragedy struck. Caesarum, the chief judge, was slain by Gadiant and robbers who had infiltrated among the people. Satan had stirred up the hearts of the more part of the Nephites to unite with them rather than drive them from their midst. Meanwhile, the Lamanites, when they had discovered Gadiant and robbers among them, hunted them down and destroyed them by preaching the word of God to them and bringing them into the church. Among the Nephites, the robbers had gained such power that they controlled the government, and even the more part of the righteous had been seduced to their secret works and dark ways. All this happened while Nephi was away in the land northward preaching with the faithful Lamanites to the people there. They had no success. Nephi returned home to find his people in a state of awful wickedness. When Nephi saw it, he bowed himself upon his garden tower and exclaimed in the agony of his soul. Oh, how could ye have forgotten your God in the very day that he has delivered you? But behold, it is to get gain. Even at this time, ye are ripening because of your murders and your fornication and wickedness for everlasting destruction. Yea, and except ye repent, it will come unto you soon. Behold, it is now even at your doors. Yea, go ye in unto the judgment seat and search. And behold, your chief judge is murdered and lieth in his blood. The wicked judges sent messengers to see if Nephi's claims were true. The messengers found the judge just as Nephi had said. The prophet was put on trial and after condemning the people for their wickedness, told them where to find the real murderer. Even with this great miracle and many others Nephi had done, many still would not believe in his words. Not long after, Samuel the Lamanite came to Zarahemla to preach the joyous message of the coming of Christ, delivered to him by an angel. The people cast him out, so he went upon the wall, and he delivered the message God wanted him to give. The people eventually tried to slay him with stones and arrows, but Samuel was protected by the Lord. 